cannot remember the last time I had a rifle from FX on the table right here in the Rat Cave. It has been, I bet it's been three or four years. It's got to be, without looking through the playlists and stuff. But I'm pretty sure, what did I do? I did the... I'm sure I did the Wildcat. Yeah, I definitely did the Wildcat. I did the Bobcat. Uh, I've done a few FXs. Done a few FXs. And I've got to admit, I do like them. I do like them. Now, let's get this out of the way first. I am not in FX's pocket, okay? Like a lot of other YouTubers are, you know, egg on channels are. I'm not. So you get a totally unbiased review, okay? And I'm not going to lie, though, I do like FXs. I, I do like them. They're not my favourite airgun manufacturer, but I do like them. I, I do really think their stuff is good. No doubt about it. I've, I have got my gripes with this thing. This, by the way, <laughs> just in case you've tuned in and just you're hearing me waffling on, this is the FX Dreamline Bullpup or Dream Pup. Um, you can get the Dreamline, which is like a conventional sort of shape rifle whatever you like this I, I think they should have called this really the it's the dreamline because it's modular basically like the dreamline series from fx you can swap out the barrels you can change all sorts of bits on them um but it's almost it's like it's a it's a baby wildcat if that makes sense. Um, you get a Wildcat. I wish I had one here to sort of compare it, but a Wildcat is, looks exactly the same, just slightly bigger. But this thing, um, the Dreamline Dreamline Ball Pop, or the Dream Pop, is really quite nice. It really is. Uh, it's so pointable. It's an absolute brilliant little pest control gun, you know, for around barns and stuff like that, around farms absolutely ideal let's throw out some specs and we'll just do this in normal uh, rack and load style um got a bit high tech here in the rat cave you know and just got the tablet now rather than my scrawled out notes or using my mobile phone so what i'll do is i'll just uh, i'll sort of read off fx's um uh, website here and just sort of show show you and you know sort of state all the obvious stuff and read out some specs so um, all right we'll, we'll talk about the magazines i'll give you the magazine um like capacities so in 2.2 this is um 2.2 um you get 18 shot magazine 177 177 even you get 22 shot i hope my tablet's going off um 16 shot in 25 and in 30 cal you get 13 shot available calibers are 17722 25 and 30 okay the dream line um dream pop oh that's just going to throw me out and it dream pop we'll call it the dream pop um it's got the smooth twist x barrel match grade free floating barrel barrel okay now they call it free floating. Uh, this, this what well, sometimes I don't get. If that was free floating, there'd be nothing touching it from that point onwards. But uh, the rails mounted on there. Is that free floating? It's free floated underneath. Is it totally free floating? Mm, yeah, I'll argue that in the comments. Why don't you? Um. Fill pressure is 230 bar or 3,300 psi. Manual safety catch, 11 millimeter dovetail scope mount, half inch UNF muzzle thread. Uh, let's have a look at the other bits. Um, uh, quick charge, uh, quick charge system for charging it. Uh, air capacity for 17722, it's 220 cc's. F25 is 290 and for 30 cal is 290 as well. Okay, I won't go into the energy because it's 12, 12 foot pound UK version this one is. Okay, really, really nice, really nice uh, little rifle. That is the one we've got there, as you can see. You can get um, the buddy bottle 
one as well, which obviously will get even more shot count, but that looks that looks really, really nice. Let's if I've got a signal here, because I've had to um I've had to sort of bring this oh yeah, I'm still getting Wi-Fi. I'm I'm out in the rat cave. So here's a Dreamline tactical, for example. There, they're they're really nice. I'll try and get hold of one of them. And that's the buddy bottle one. Loads of variations. But it is the, the, the tactical version obviously hasn't got this synthetic stock, but it's the it's the same sort of configuration, obviously apart from ball put, but the same um you know workings if that makes sense. But it's more sort of AR config config configuration as you can see with um like the AR pistol grip there, AR um, stock and whatnot. But yeah, it's uh, it's pretty cool, this um, this Dream Puppies. I've got to admit, I'm, I am quite impressed. Now, let's talk about the magazines. We'll take it from the top, we'll talk about the magazine. Now this is probably one of my gripes, that, and I've always had this gripe, even if you go back and look at my old videos of the Wildcat, um, this has always been my little bit, of, little bit of a gripe with FX. Okay, the, is the magazines. Okay, I just find them a bit of a ball ache. I don't know. They they're just making things over complicated. I know they're not complicated. I know they're not. They're just a little bit over engineered. I mean, I am a big fan of the Virac um, HW100, and the magazines on that is just a simple magazine. You just push the pellets in. It's like a metal magazine, round magazine, push the pellets in, jobs are good. Nothing can go wrong with it, okay? With these, a little bit more um, technical. So there's your magazine, cassette style magazine. I mean, don't get me wrong. Take a couple of these out with you, uh, out in the field, and, you know, you've got enough shots there. Absolutely, of course you have. You know, buy several magazines, load them up before you go out, you're rocking. Try loading one of these out up out in the field when you've got cold fingers. Um, you're gonna struggle. You are gonna struggle. So then to load this, I don't know whether I can do it. I think I've got pellets stuck in there. Actually, I've still got one in. That's something I did find in testing. It would always leave a pellet in for some reason. So it's a bit weird. So with the magazines, you've got like this this thing in the middle that you can sort of turn around. So basically you, you turn that round so you take so you can take this part off. Okay. So already you've got you've got the magazine in bits just to load it up. And then what you do, let's get rid of that pellet. It's a JSB, by the way. Just in case you're wondering, we'll talk about that in a minute. So once you've um, you've opened the magazine like that, you've got to then hang on. I'm probably getting this wrong. No, no. You spin it all the way around like that. And then you drop your first pellet in, like so, without it falling through. And then if you let go, it won't spring back. Then you've got to load all your pellets in, okay? Once you've done that, you then put that bit back on and then move this thing all the way around to lock it on. It is, it's not complicated, it is easy enough to be fair. But my God, try doing it when you've got cold fingers and you only get supplied one magazine with the rifle. I reckon you're gonna need, you're gonna need at least another two, at the very least another two, aren't you? You are, simple as. Let me take this pellet out. Oh, I've got to, I've got to strip the magazine now, haven't I? So move that to there. Da, 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 da. Let's get this pellet out. Is it going to happen? Yeah, it's out. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. I just... Yeah, they're cool. they are They are pretty cool. They're pretty solid as well. You know, they're marked as well what calibre it is. Obviously, you all know if you're buying whatever calibre rifle, won't you? But that's... A little bit of, I think it, that's been my main gripe with FX is, is just an over overcomplicated um, magazine system. I think though, to be fair, these are probably a bit easier than the ones that come out on the on the Wildcat. Um, these seem a little bit easier, but 
whatever. Now, let's put the magazine over there. I'll show you how that loads and everything in a minute, but let's take this from the top, okay? So, recoil pad, nothing, or butt pad, whatever you want to call it. Pretty sort of hard, is that rubber? It, it, yeah, really hard rubber. Um, Okay, but I don't reckon it's the most pleasant of butt pads, but it's, you know, this is not a powder burner, is it? It's not gonna, you ain't gotta think about recoil or anything. It's minimalistic. I mean, it could have, you can make it a bit nicer than that, at least have some FX logo on there or something like that. Synthetic stock, thumb hole stock, as you can see, ballpark configuration. Now, let's get another gripe out of the way. As you know, I am a lefty, okay? Uh, you can't, you cannot swap this out. Like a pulsar, a day state pulsar, for example, you can't swap it around to left-handed, okay? So this is right-handed. And it was a little bit of a struggle, as you can see in the footage. Why was it a struggle? Well, for a start, I've got the cocking lever right here, lefties. You have the cocking lever right there in your face. This cheek piece it ain't the most comfortable when you're on this side, lovely on that side, although a little bit of cold because it is metal. But on this side, not so comfortable. Plus you've got the safety catch here, and obviously you've got the cocking lever. Can't be swapped. This is not an ambidextrous rifle or ball pot. So that is a bit annoying. I mean, for the for the money that you pay for one of these, I mean, they don't do it, and from what I can gather, they don't do a dedicated left-hander. So why, why aren't they making these, like, for example, Day State Pulsar, where you can just swap them out? You know, it's less than, well, I think you can do it in under a minute with a Day State Pulsar. You could swap it around to left-handed. No problem at all. And what I found with that, moaning about having my cheek on there and um, the safety catch in my face and the cocking lever in my face, not only that, kind of jumping ahead, but when you put the magazine in, so you put the magazine in like so, that recess there, look, like on all FXs, see the brass, well, that's the, like your barrel, basically. Um, that lines up with that and it pushes straight in like that so if you're a lefty and <laughs> this probably didn't help matters actually that is a hawk uh, air touch uh, scope on probably not yeah, don't get me wrong lovely little scope really really nice little scope probably wasn't ideal for this rifle because it's got literally zero um, eye relief on it. So you've got to get your eye right up against it. It does come with a, a rubber eye cup, but I didn't put it on. Um, so I had to basically have my eye right up against it. So when I'm in that position, not only have I got my eye right up against the, um, the scope, uh, my nose is right up against the magazine as well. So I'm squashing my hooter right up against the magazine. Oh, it's just, it just wasn't a comfortable um, rifle to shoot for me. Yeah, all right, admittedly, if I got a, um, a scope with a bit more eye relief, you know, I could have set myself up a little bit better, but uh, it's, it's still not a lefty. Still, still not good for left-handers. So if you're a lefty, you need not apply. Now, while this is cocked, we're kind of sort of bouncing all over the place on this review, but you know, that's how we roll in the rat cave. Let's give that trigger a pull just while it's cocked. Um, I don't like, like to leave uh, guns cocked if I can help it. I know it's PCP, but I don't know, just don't like doing it. So, kindly on loan as well from Livens Gun Shop. Just give them a shout out. Let's give the trigger a pull. Now it's a super light trigger. You cannot deny FX triggers are oh, sweet as they really are. Let's give this a pull. It was a sweet trigger. Ooh. Oh, I probably pulled that a little bit hard, and it can it can be uh, adjusted 
really, really quite a lot lower than that. Let's give it another one. Let's just give it another pull. I don't think I've, I had that in the right position then. Uh, yeah, okay. One pound, we'll call it one pound, 10 ounces. Sweet trigger, sweet trigger. It can go a lot lower though, a lot lower. Really, 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 really nice trigger. Adjustable blade on there, as you can see. Oh, set up for a, for a righty. But hey, hey ho. Yeah, no, really nice trigger. Really nice trigger. That is a metal trigger guard as well. You've got FX's logo there, which is very cute. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Back to this end then, where all my gripes are. Yeah, I've, I've just got to get them out of the way, and I? So yeah, lefties, not a good rifle for you, okay? It's got to be shot right-handed, okay? Right, moving on then. So, this has got all the bells and whistles um, this FX has. So, regulated, as you can see, because there's a gauge here. Um, you've got adjustable power setting here, and you can even adjust the hammer on it as well. Okay, to really sort of set this thing up so it's absolutely sweet as. Uh, there is, I don't believe you can adjust, there is a one, one adjustment on it. I think it's the regulator. I don't believe you can do that on the UK version. Uh, don't quote me, but um, go on an NFX sponsored uh, YouTube channel. They'll tell you all the really uh, juicy details, but I'm pretty sure you can't. There is one adjustment you cannot do on it. It tells you to uh, basically not touch it if it's a 12 foot pound version. Um, moving on to the rail. I do like the rail. You've got loads of room. Look at that scope rail. 11 millimeter dove rail, dovetail rail, whatever you want to call it. Really, really quite nice. You know, plenty of real estate for throwing on the scope. Did I mention the scope? Yeah, I did. Hawk um, Air Touch. Really nice, nice little scope actually. Really nice little scope. Probably not the best for this rifle, but um, hey ho. Um, safety catch is there. Nice and uh, nice and simple. Silent as well. That's nice. No sort of click, you know, to scare off your quarry. Uh, regulator gauge there, as mentioned power settings like I said this is a modular rifle so you can swap out the barrel uh, just all your, your power settings there depending on what barrel you've got on I ain't going to change the barrel on it uh, I've not got another one here but uh, I'm not even going to take that one off I, I don't know what it is <laughs> with me I don't like fiddling with um, high, well I'm going to say high pressure air I just don't like it I don't, I don't like I don't even like Stuff as this sounds right, I sort of squirm when I'm charging uh, PCPs up. I don't know what it is. I think I've got a fear of blooming high pressure air or something. I don't know what it is. I must go back to my diving days or whatever. I don't know. Um, that's another story. But yeah, there is your. Um, now, when, it's kind of funny. When you first look at this, you think, oh God, that's got a bit of a small um, air tank on it. Uh, but it is quite big. So, I mean, obviously it's all, it's all the way back here, so it's quite a bit big. There is your um, gauge there. So nice and, uh, you know, easy to read. Although pff, I, I've always liked them when they're sort of not muzzle end, if I'm honest, um, but you kind of get used to it. Filler area is there as well, and that's dust cover. So you can, sorry, I'm going off camera. So you can sort of, um, cover that up when you're done but nice and easy to charge just really really nice you know they they're almost sort of um simplistic aren't they um some of the fx's are but but they are solid they really are solid i'm not going to deny it um and they really are well made this thing <clears throat> let me just sort of hold it it is just so pointable even though well, let's let's hold it right handed it's so pointable, you know, if you're if you're shooting in a barn, doing some pest control, oh, bang on, absolutely bang on. 
Oh, it just upsets me that it's just not for a lefty. It really does. Cock and lever, standard FX. They, I mean, these things haven't changed, have they? Uh, that's one thing they have got right. Um, well, they've got a lot of things right, haven't they? But you, the cock and lever is nice and nice and simple yet solid. You know, jobs are good. And let's just fire that off in a safe direction. That's just blown some of the dust off my table. Accuracy wise then, let's have a look at accuracy. Now this, as I will always say, is my shooting. You guys will do way better, way, way better than me. But this was a really windy day, okay? I think it was Storm Dennis when I was testing this thing out. Um, 30 yards and we was using, where are they? Because people always say, oh, you should use these to test, right? You know, you're using the wrong pellets to test. I've got some, I've got some JSBs, all right? These seem to be the most fashionable pellet at the minute. And no, to be fair, FX do state that all their rifles are tested or work best, work best with JSB match Diablo pellets. Well, okay, these are my results then. So let's, let me show you, shall I show you the worst first? Uh, they're not. They're not that bad. All right, this is probably the worst one. You can't really see this one because I, I, it's not a great target. Uh, 30 yards, very windy. Okay. That's not bad. Don't know what happened in this middle one. Can't, I can't even remember. I did notice, I did have the odd flyer. Uh, whether that was to, to do with the wind down range or what, but occasionally the, what, the odd pellet would just go, you know, off, off quite a little bit. Let's, I was using a variety of paper targets here. Yeah, I think I had, this was one way I had a fly as well. <coughs> Excuse me, I'm losing my voice. That there, I remember that one. Veering off for some reason. Very windy, I mean, not the, not the best grouping I've um, had with a PCP rifle. Um, but it ain't, it ain't. I've had, I've had better results with other rifles, but I, I, I will stress, could have been the wind. Could have been the wind. Not me, the in, environmental weather wind. Um, still not bad. I mean, at the end of the day, that's 30 yards. It's a pigeon, isn't it? Or a rabbit at the end of the day. So, less wind, um, you know, me being a... If I was right-handed, I'd probably tighten those groups up even better. Probably have a scope that I could see through a bit better, you know, positioning-wise. <clears throat> I'd be able to tighten those uh, those groups up, no doubt about it. But for what it is and for the, this test rifle, that is what what happened. That is what happened. But yeah, not a bad rifle at all. I mean. <sighs> I'm, like I said at the start of the video, <clears throat> I am not, um, you know, I'm not paid by any any sort of company or whatever, you know, to do to do reviews or anything yet. Let me stress yet, and it, when when it does happen, let me tell you this right here and now, okay? I swear, I swear on the rack patch that you will still get an unbiased review, okay? Swearing on it, swearing on it, guys. <laughs> you will still get an unbiased review. I don't care. That's how I roll. Right. What I will say as well, um, the manual is excellent. Excellent. You know I'm a bit of a manual snob, guys. This is excellent. Colour photographs, nice and clear. Love it. It even explains how to load the magazine. Oh, with ease. I had to refer to that. Yeah, of course. Um, excellent manual. Really, really excellent manual. And this basically covers all of the uh, the Dreamline uh, rifles. I do like that, you know. I do like that tactical one. I do like it. That magazine, my nose wouldn't be pushed up against that magazine, would it? I do like that. I think, mm, I don't know. Yeah, nice, nice. 
I'm just thinking then, are they, are they trying to copy my, my table there? Is that, it's not quite a match, is it? No. Um, yeah, excellent manual. You, you know, guys, like I said, I am a, I am a manual snob and this is a real good manual. But, but, got one gripe. I got one gripe with the manual. No exploded diagrams. What? Oh my days. Oh well, we can live without that. Yeah, excellent, excellent manual FX. You know, that is uh, tempo. I'll, I'll give you, I'll give you nine points on the manual because there's no exploded diagrams in there. Or I've not seen any anyway. Unless a page is stuck together. That just sounds wrong, doesn't it? Hmm. Okay. Yeah, nine, nine points uh, FX on the manual. So, but yeah, the FX Dreamline or Dream Pop, ball pop version of the Dreamline or Mini Wildcat. That's, I'll, I'll call it the Baby Wildcat. So, because it is, it's got the same stock as the Wildcat, more or less. Slight, slightly sort of shrunk in the wash uh, version, but ah, uh, yeah, I like it. I do like it. I just wish, I wish there was a left hand version, or I wish it was available to swap round into a left hand configuration. I'd really, really would like that. I did mention that it's got half inch UNF. Uh, you've got a thread protector there. Metal one as well, not a plastic one. So that's pretty cool. Uh, oh, I'll tell you what, I've not showed you the box, have I? Now, actually, this is probably a, a good, good thing. I'm going to say well done. Let me just grab the box. I'm going to say well done to FX on the box. Oh, it's open. It's half open. Hang on. Urgh. Hang on. Hang on. Hang on. I've not. I've not prepared the box. There's nothing else in there really in the box. Uh, oh, okay. Just your quick, quick fill thingy. Uh, what's that? Uh, uh, oh yeah, this is. That's quite interesting. That's what I referred to um, earlier. Uh, Sub twelve foot pound version, you can't you can't adjust the regulator, okay? Because it will cause damage. I did say that earlier. So, yeah, the box. Now, I'm going a bit sort of Greta Greta Thunberg here on you guys, but isn't it nice to just see a cardboard box rather than a crappy plastic box that you'll never ever use apart from taking the gun home and then you just throw it in your attic or whatever. It's good to have a cardboard box. I mean, do you guys hold on to what cardboard boxes? I don't, they just get squashed and put in the recycling bin, you know. But uh, I, I really wish other companies would take note and get rid of the crappy plastic boxes that rifles and uh, pistols come in. You know, no need for them. Just do them out of cardboard. You can recycle them then, can't you? It's a lot easier. So yeah, oh, that's, sorry, that's a, bit of, that's a bit of Greta sort of uh, rubbing off on me there. Sorry, just got to get out. You've got, you've got to think of the environment, haven't you guys? Oh God, think of the environment. Won't be long before they this, this start banning this stuff, will they? Oh God, they're already on about it with shotgun cartridges and lead shot. I oh, wonder what will happen with, um, with pellets, handgun pellets. What are they going to do? For hunting, and they're going to ban lead pellets, steel pellets. Would that work in an airgun? I don't know. That's another story, and probably another video. Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed that. Bit of a fun video. Thanks for watching. That is your rack and load review of the FX Dreamline Dream Pop or oh, Baby Wildcat. Thanks for watching, guys. That's rack and load. See ya.